Today, I want to share with you two new awesome CSS features. One is a utility function that makes adding dark mode to your website incredibly easy. And the other one allows us to implement scrolling animations in no time without using any JavaScript whatsoever only CSS. The utility function is called light dark. Without light dark, to add dark mode to our website using CSS, we usually use media queries to check if the user's device is on dark mode or not. If they are, we overwrite all the values of the light theme to make a dark one, like on this example. Here by default, we are on light mode with the text color of our body set to black, the background color set to white. Then we are using a media query to check if the user is on dark mode by using the prefers color scheme media feature. If the value of preferred color scheme is dark, then we invert the colors on the body, making the text color white and the background color black. All prefers color scheme thus is tell us what color scheme the user chose, with the two possible values being light or dark. The problem with this approach is that it's very verbose. We are repeating ourselves a lot. We have to write the body selector and color and background properties twice. We have to basically duplicate all the color related styles and put them all outside of the media query for light mode and another time inside of the media query for dark mode. Imagine doing this for every component on your website that needs to have a different color in light and dark mode. That is what the light dark utility function is here to fix. For light dark to work, we first have to specify what color scheme our website supports. The way you do that is by using the color scheme property like this. All we're doing here is telling the browser that our website supports both light and dark color schemes. After doing that, we can now use the light dark function when setting the colors of our elements. We can take the code we had before and change it to look like this. The light dark function takes two arguments. The first one is the color you want to use if the color scheme of the user is light. And the second one is the color you want to use if the color scheme of the user is dark. So here, if the color scheme of the user is light, the text color of the body will be black and the background color will be white. And if the color scheme of the user is dark, then it will be the opposite. It is such a tiny little function, but it's super useful. Compare the previous code where we have to write a whole media query and duplicate each property with this. Because the light dark function checks what the supported color schemes are, which is why we have to add this code to our website, we can use the color scheme property to force dark or light mode on specific elements. Take this example where we are saying that this form only supports a light color scheme. So if we use the light dark function on an input that is inside of that form, for example, no matter what color scheme the user has selected, the background of the input in this case will always be white. The light dark function will see that the form, which is the parent of the input, only supports a light color scheme. And so it will always return the first value, which is white. Even though the light dark function is very useful, it is very limited to what it can do. And that is because it only works with color values. This will work but this won't. Right now, the light dark function is only supported on Firefox version 120. Chromium developers already started working on it, and hopefully WebKit Safari developers get to it as well. The other CSS feature I wanted to show you is the animation timeline property. This property allows us to implement scroll animations using only CSS. Scroll animations are very popular nowadays. They can make a website go from average looking to awesome. Apple uses scroll animations all the time to make really good looking landing pages. With the new animation timeline property, we can get scroll animations without writing a single line of JavaScript code. Let me show you. Here we have an HTML page that has a title, paragraphs with text, and in the middle of it has a div with the class rectangle that I want to animate when the user scrolls. Right now, the page looks like this. My goal is to animate the pink rectangle when the user scrolls to it. First, let's cook an animation for it. This simple animation takes the rectangle from being transparent and small to being not transparent and normally sized. We give this animation to the rectangle and make it run for 10 seconds, getting an output like this. This isn't what we want. As you can see, the animation runs immediately, whether we are scrolling or not. And what we want is to sync the animation to the scroll. So what we are going to do is to remove the time from the animation. And then we add the animation timeline property and we set its value to scroll. Animation timeline basically tells the animation where to get its progress from. We are used to specifying the time of animations in seconds. If we pass a number of seconds, then the animation will start from the moment the page loads until the seconds we set. But if we remove the time as we did and we set the animation timeline to scroll, the animation is going to take its progress from the scroll bar. So if the scroll bar is at the top of the page, the progress of the animation will be 0%. And as the scroll bar moves down, the progress goes up until it reaches 100%. So now our page looks like this. As you can see, the progress of the animation is now connected to the position of the scroll. And that's it. You can use this property to build a scroll 
visual indicator for your website, or you can use it to fade images in a beautiful way. The great thing about this property is that the animations won't run on the main thread, which means they will be more fluid and your website won't be slow. The animation timeline property has fairly good support among Chromium-based browsers like Chrome and Edge, and it's behind an experimental flag on Firefox. Hopefully Safari, which looks like it is the new Internet Explorer, always implementing things last, eventually implements it as well. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what do you think of these features and if you already knew about them. Tell me which one you like the most and which one you want to use first. And remember that if you want to learn to code for free with me, all you have to do is click the link below. There you will find free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter and Next.js among many others for free. We have courses for all levels, from beginner to advanced, all for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Until now, kamsahago, sarang hamida, see you on the next one. Dami bye bye.